Okay, worksheet number five. Derivative of topics, law well, topics, number two. Okay, 3x squared minus 4xy equals 1. 1x equals 1, dy dx equals. So we have to find the derivative. To find the derivative, we know implicit is involved because we have y's mixed into our equation. We also know there's a little bit of product rule going on here because we have 4x times y. All right, so I'm going to label them here. So uh, uh, the 4x I'm going to treat as my f, and the y I'll treat as my g here. All right, so I'm going to jump into my derivative step here. 3x squared becomes 6x minus. I'm going to protect the inside portion because the negative has to distribute through. Okay, 4x becomes 4. Y stays, it's the original G function. Back to F. And then G prime. Y's derivative is 1 dy dx. And then equals 0. Distribute the negative through, clean up, see if we can get it down to a numeric value. All right, so we want to get it down to a numeric value. We have x equals 1. We know we can replace x with 1, but the issue is that we don't have the y value. So how can we get to the y value? Uh, this equation? Oh, I guess, yeah. Well, um, we're actually not going to, we have too many variables here. So we have to rely on something else. Is there something else that we can, because we have to find the y value before we can insert into this equation. What can we use to help us find the ordered pair for our graph? Is there another place that we can look for the y value? Oh, it's more of a... Into the original, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, so the original is the lo is um, location based, right? Uh, original equation always gives us information about our location, so we know we can insert one in for this equation, solve for y. Once we solve for y, then we have the order pair. Order pair is then used to help us find the slope. Okay, replace x with 1, and we can solve for y.
Okay, so I have the X value. I have the Y value. Order pair one and one half. They can now be inserted into the derivative and we can now solve for dy dx. Oh, Okay, hey, six minus two is four. Divide both sides by four. Okay, number three, uh, we have a, a F prime provided, and we're looking for a relative max on the original function. So what we can do is we can use the calculator to graph the F prime. We can label our F prime graph, create our sign line, and we can read the arrows to see where our relative max is going to be. Zoom six will just get me to a standard window. I'm going to uh, bring in my X values a little bit. And maybe stretch out my y value a little more. I guess really, this is really kind of preference in terms of how you want to display your graph. Okay, there's my graph. Okay, really rough sketch here, um, but I know that F prime, I can label what I'm looking at here above the X axis is positive slope, below is negative slope, slope zero is on the X axis. So I wanna be able to identify these X intercepts. Go to second trace, choose option two. I'll scroll to a point to the left of the exit. I'm going to target this point. So I want to choose a point to the left. Hit enter. Scroll to a point on the right of the x-intercept. Hit enter. And it'll zero in on that value again. This notation just means zero. Your y value is zero. So negative 1.93. Repeat the process for the other two. Okay, 
0 0.511. One point four one nine, one point four two. Okay, so my sign line. Um, and once I create my sign line, I just look at the side where my graph is located. Below it's going to represent negative slope, above is positive slope. So I'm just looking to see where the graph changes from a positive to a negative slope. Yeah, good. 0 0.511 because I expect a relative min at negative 1.93, a relative max at 0 0.511, and relative min at 1.42. I'm just indicating where the graph lives, looking at um, what I've uh, identified to the, to, the, um, to the side, and then converting those arrows. And once I have the arrows in front of me, I can kind of imagine my graph rising and falling in accordance with the arrows. OK, questions? Okay, let's look at um, number. We did number five, four in class, so let's look at number five. Okay, uh, which of the following is our uh, function decreasing? So we know that we have to go through first derivative test. We're gonna, well, we're gonna do this by by hand. We're gonna set f prime equal to zero, create a sine line, test intervals. So on a problem like this, on the test, I'm going to ask you, go through the steps, show me everything. Obviously, you can use your calculator to uh, confirm, but I need to see, I need to see first root of test steps. So first things first, let's find f prime. We can find set f prime equal to zero. We do power rule for the first two terms. 2x to the fourth becomes 8x cubed. 3x squared becomes 6x. 1 goes away to 0. Right, set f prime equal to 0. Yeah, factor out. Say, uh, factor out what? 2x. 2x. Right, okay, that's right. Okay. You know what you do. Okay, so 2x gets factored out, and what remains? Good, so then we can set both parts equal to zero. So I have um, four under a square root, so I'm going to just uh, uh, resolve that square root of four to be two, but then there's plus or minus involved, so I have three critical points. I have zero, positive root three over two, and negative root three over two. So all of those values can go onto my sign line. Why'd you get over two? Oh, um, because I did square root of three over the square root of four, and I, um, the four is under the square root as well. So there's my line of reasoning. Root three over four is same thing as root three over root four, and root four is two. Uh, 
we want to choose a um, function. Well, let's see. We want to choose values in each interval here. So this is around negative um, 0.8. If you plug in the calculator, around negative 0.8. So I can choose negative one half here, and I can choose negative one or negative two here. We test it against our derivative function. Uh, I, I think the factor form is a little bit easier to plug into. So I'm going to insert negative 1. Negative times positive is negative, so decreasing. Plug in negative 1 half, I'll get a negative here. But this, um, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So 4 over 4 is 1, 1 minus 3 is negative, so I have negative times negative, which is positive. Plug 1 half in, I get positive times negative, which is negative. And if I put 1 in here, positive times positive. Okay, based off these arrows, interval decreasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have those split intervals, right? First and third interval, that both are showing decreasing slopes. All right, any questions here with five? Okay, numbers. Well, we did number six in class, but I, I'll still go over it uh, briefly. Okay, so the idea behind number six is we are dealing with both F and G's derivative, but we are not um, setting them equal to each other because we want to figure out where their tangents have perpendicular, where their tangent lines are perpendicular. So we don't want the slopes to be the same. We want their slopes to be opposite reciprocals of each other. That's the relationship with perpendicular slopes. So that means I want to find F prime. I want to find G prime. But they're going to have to be in this relationship where F prime is equal to negative one over G prime. Okay. From here, we want to we know this is going to be how we're going to approach the problem, but now we're going to um, figure out what to insert for F prime and what to insert for G prime. So to get to F prime, we'll go through power rule. Okay, to get a G prime. We'll apply the rule for e to the u, which is e to the u times u prime. So f prime gets replaced with 2 times x minus 4, and then negative 1 over g prime. g prime gets replaced with 3 e to the 3x. And now, if I just bring everything over to one side, because this is not something that I can solve by hand, but if I bring everything over to one side, I can just graph an expression. And if I want it to be equal to 0, I can just look for the x-intercept. And before I hit graph, I know that my answer choices are all between negative two and two. So it just makes it uh, where I can just adjust my window without having, without 
um, have to worry about whether I'm missing um, one of the solutions here. Mm, let's see. Oh, I messed up here. My graph should be 3e to the 3x. Okay, so there's my x-intercept. Second trace, 0. Choose a point to the left of the x-intercept. Okay, hit enter. Choose a point on the other side of the x-intercept, hit enter. Negative 1.143. Number seven. Cosine of 3 pi x squared, we want to find f prime of 3. We have to go through our derivative step. Remember the rule for sine of u, or sorry, derivative for cosine of u is negative sine of u times u prime. We got to find the derivative first before we can do anything with that one third. Okay, so cosine of u becomes negative sine of u. times u prime times what's in, uh, the derivative of the inside. So that becomes 6 pi x. Now we can insert one third in for the x's. Uh, this becomes one ninth, three pi over nine. It's just same thing as pi over three. Uh, sine of pi over three is just root three over two with a negative in front. So the twos cancel out. We get negative pi root three, or negative root three pi. Number eight is finding the derivative of the inverse at a point. So we can create our chart. We'll start with the information down here. We'll work around this chart. By the time we come, ac uh, come around full circle, we're going to have enough information uh, to fill out the remainder of this, of this bottom here. So I want to find the derivative of in f inverse at 2. So we know 2 is the x value of my inverse. I'm going to dedicate the uh, top row to the relationship uh, of the ordered pairs between a function and its inverse. So if 2 is the x value of my inverse, then we know 2 must be the y value of my original. So I know this much is true. And this is true, then we can now try to use the problem to help us um, move further uh, into getting to that missing value. We know this is the y value of the original function, so I'm going to insert that 2 into f of x. 
and we're going to see if we can figure out that x value. Bring everything over to one side. Now, this is meant to be a non calculator question, but this is not factorable. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just go through a series of guess and check. And we should be able to arrive at a number that's relatively easy to find. So let's start with the easiest number, which is zero. Is zero going to make this a true statement? OK, zero doesn't work. How about one? Can we try one? Yeah. OK, but plug one in. One to the fifth is one. One plus one is two. Two minus two is zero. So one does make this equation a true statement. So if you see something that's not factorable and you're not and it's meant to be non-calculated on the AP exam. Just start testing some values and you should be able to find it pretty quickly. So we have our X value that we're going to need. Because our next step is to figure out F prime of one. And then the, um, the idea is that if I can find the slope of the graph at one, then that slope is going to be numerically similar to uh, the slope of the inverse at two. These numbers are just going to be reciprocals of each other. Okay. So we're first going to find f prime of one. To find f prime of one first, we have to identify f prime of x. Okay. We can go through power rule here. F prime of one. If f prime of 1 equals 6, that means the derivative of the inverse at 2 must be what? All right, number nine. We're given h of x equals x plus one times f of x. We're trying to find f, sorry, h prime of four. So to get to h prime of four, we first have to get to h prime of x. To get to h prime of x, what's necessary here? Something else though. Would it be product rule? Yeah, we got to go through product rule. X plus one is now, if it was added to f of x, we can just find them separately, but the fact that they're being multiplied, we got to make it go through product rule. Good. F prime times G plus F G prime. F prime is one G function. Back to F. And then G prime. G prime is the derivative of this F, which is F prime. Okay, replace uh, every X with four. So 
1 times f of 4 plus 5 times f prime of 4. All right, so uh, in order to find f of 4 and f prime of 4, we're going to go to our graph. f of 4 is just the ordered pair. f prime of 4 is the slope. What's f of 4? Four. What's f prime of 4? Negative 2. So for f prime, do we just find the slope? Exactly, we just find the slope. So we see that this line is going to be the same slope all the way through. We just are going to find uh, two points that we can clearly identify, and then we just figure out the slope. So I'm going to go down two units and over 1. Rise over 1, negative 2 over 1. My slope must be negative two. All right, thank you. Okay. Make our final set of substitutions. Answer choice A. OK, any questions? Back page. Okay, spherical balloon is being inflated at a rate of three cubic inches per second. Uh, we see cubic inches. We know that's volume related per second. That's time related. So it's um, dv over dt. And it's being inflated. So we know it's a positive rate. This is going to be a related race problem here. Determine the rate of change of the radius of the balloon. That's drdt. When the when the balloon's radius is five inches. Okay. We have two uh, pieces of information. We have a missing variable that we're looking for, and we have our volume formula for a sphere, which is four thirds pi r cubed. We can go ahead and find the derivative with respect to time. Keep the coefficient. Find the derivative of r cubed by going through power rule. With related rates, every variable gets impacted by time, so there's always going to be a d over dt for each of these variables, v and for r. All right, we should have everything that we need. DVDT gets replaced with three. R gets replaced with five. And now we're just trying to solve for DRDT. There's my substitution, dvdt is 3, r is 5. If I can clean this up, which ends up giving me 100 pi, 
I divide over to the other side. Um, I'm looking at my answer choices. My answer choices are all in, in uh, terms of a decimal with pi already um, resolved into the into the value. So I'm just going to enter all this into the calculator. And it's going to be the closest to C. Yeah, it's squared, right? Okay, questions with ten. Number 11. Number 11, uh, it says if f of x equals sine of x over 2, and there exists a number c on the interval from pi over 2 to 3, 3 pi over 2, that satisfies the conclusion of mean value theorem, which of the following could be c? So I first have to identify what mean value theorem is. Mean value theorem is just basically setting the derivative equal to the slope between the endpoints. Whatever slope exists between the endpoints, we can guarantee that slope is going to have to live somewhere on the curve as well. All right, whatever slope I'm able to gather at the endpoints, that slope of the secant is going to be somewhere on the graph as well. Guaranteed. So we have a very specific formula for that. So here's our formula. F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So first thing that we want to do is we want to find the order pair so that we can actually figure out what the slope is at the endpoints. So I want to find F of pi over 2. I want to find F of 3 pi over 2. I like I want to rewrite my sine function to be sine of one half X. It's the same thing. It's just that having to divide by two with a fraction, it feels messy. So what if I just push that. Two out as one half that anything that I insert in will just feel like a multiplication and not as a division. So instead of one half um, or instead of pi over two divided by two, if I can just um, think of it as one half times pi over two, which just makes it a little easier to resolve. I get sine of pi over four, which is root two over two. 
I'm also going to find the order pair at my other endpoint, f of 3 pi over 2. So I insert um, 3 pi over 2 into the x of my sine function. So 1 half times 3 pi over 2 becomes 3 pi over 4. Sine of 3 pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. So here, the y values are the same. So what does that remind you of? This is mean value theorem, but it's also what? Is it Rolle's theorem? Also Rolle's theorem. But they don't have to specify that because Rolle's theorem is just a very specific version, a very specific case of mean value theorem. This still falls under the umbrella of mean value theorem. It's just that Rolle's theorem is very specific. It's trying to guarantee a slope of zero, um, but technically this is also a, a variation of, of mean value theorem that could occur. Good, okay. So, uh, but if we want to convince ourselves, we can always just go through the steps, right? We can um, plug in change in Y over change in X, but because these are the same values, our slope is always going to end up with a zero in the numerator. But that's what we get. We get zero over a non-zero, which is zero. So what that tells us is that the endpoints is directly across from each other because they're sharing the same Y value. Because I can draw a horizontal line between the endpoints, I know there must be a place on the graph where the slope is going to be zero. So I'm guaranteed that there's a place where F prime is equal to zero. So I'm just going to go through those steps. Find, uh, find F prime. Sine of X over two, I, I know the derivative for sine of U is cosine of U times U prime. So sine of U becomes cosine of U times U prime. I set F prime equal to zero. Divide both sides by one half. And we can solve this out by hand, but I think for this case, we could just kind of pick out some values, right? What value of X will allow cosine of X over two to be equal to zero? So one thing I'm thinking of is pi over two, right? If, if I insert X with pi, then this will become cosine of pi over two. I know cosine of pi over two is gonna be zero. Okay, so that's our answer. Our answer is going to be pi. Does that make sense? Okay. Another way that I could do this, if it if it doesn't end up being something that you can easily find, you could also make this into an equation to solve. We can bring this cosine over to the other side. Go to inverse cosine. We can say x over 2 is equal to the inverse cosine of 0. Identify the values where cosine of theta is equal to 0, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So once we identify some of those values, I want to solve for x, multiply everything through by 2. So that will give me x equals pi and 3 pi. So that means it's going to keep repeating this pattern, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. But our answer choices is only showing pi, so that's our answer. D. Okay, number 12. The derivative of a function is given. Uh, what interval is f decreasing? So this is purely a calculator question. We just graph this, label our f prime, create our sine line, and wherever the graph, basically wherever my f prime is below the x-axis is where my function is decreasing. Okay, so practice entering this into your calculator.
once I have my graph, I'm going to label above to be positive slope, below is negative slope. On the x-axis is slope zero. I'm going to use my zero feature on my calculator to find those critical values. Place them onto my slope sign line. Test each interval, or I mean just a label uh, with an up or down arrow. I'm looking for interval decreasing. So wherever there's a, a down arrow, that's going to be my answer. So from 0 to 0.633, and then from 4.115 to OK, last one here. Use linear approximation. So linear approximation, we want to gather ordered pair and slope. Create our tangent line equation. And then finally, um, we can. Uh, we can insert um, our decimal value. Zero be the y value? Yeah, I, I, I let that, that zero be the, be the y value there. Oh, sorry, the, the, the zero. I let the zero be the x value. Yeah, x value. something here. So I found my order pair using my original function. To get to the derivative or to get to the slope, I found the derivative using chain rule. Uh, okay, this is a little tricky here. I didn't realize that was the case here. Okay, but on the test, it'll be more straightforward. But um, but let's uh, let's just get to the tangent line equation. The, the the strangeness doesn't occur till afterwards. But um, we have our order pair. We have our slope. from F prime. And so here's our tangent line equation, order pair zero one, slope of one half. I get Y is equal to one half X plus one. Okay, so I realized, okay, this is the strangeness of the problem. Any questions up to this point, getting to that tangent line equation? Again, on the test, the decimal will be given to you. So I would just I would rephrase this and I would say um, estimate square root of 
uh, 0.95 where x is equal to negative 0.05. Because if I insert negative 0.05 in for x, then I get 0.95, but that's kind of tough. I would have just given you this x value. So I would say estimate, um, use linear approximation when x equals negative 0.05. So we'll just insert that in. got uh, 0.975. Should be answer choice B. Yeah, so uh, if I give you a linear approximation problem, it'll be, it'll be straightforward. You want to figure out the X, I'll give you that X value to, to use. All right, uh, make sure you go through your other multiple choice uh, worksheets. Encourage you guys to work through, at least look through them. If you want to work through blank copies just to get some extra practice. All right, good luck. Study for your test. See you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, sure. Thanks, Rajay. Have a good one. Thank you. See you guys. Have a good night. Thank you.